This presentation is a quick start on how to define the product feature opcdatabase.net, which comes with free connections to OPC servers and calculation engine, and also free programmatic interface on how to set up the data logging configurations. We're going to use the simple method of using the configure OPC systems application found under the program group opcsystems.net, and there we see configure OPC systems. After you have defined at least one tag to connect to your OPC server under configure tags just to test your connection, you can now use that tag or direct OPC under the data logging configuration. Let's go to configure data logging, select the local service, now we can also can configure remote services as well just by putting in the IP address or network node name or registered domain name. We'll put in a login group name to identify this particular login group. Each login group would go to a particular table or file. I'll use a login group name called data. Now it could be tanks or you can use spaces. We could put data01, anything we would like. We can make the logging active. Notice that you can control the logging active being from another opcsystems.net tag or direct OPC item. We would then specify the logging type. The logging types that we can do are continuous at a specific rate, event driven. If we do event driven, we define a trigger tag that would be either an integer tag changing or a Boolean tag that transitions. And when that trigger occurs, it will log all of the values that we're about to define under the tags tab. We can log at a specific time of day. And when we do this, for some systems, you may want to roll back the date and time to the previous day. That's a feature that you can select right there. Also, you can use data change row. With this type, any one of the values changing causes a new record to be logged. There we have the dead band that is the engineering units of the values that must change by in order for a new record to be taken. And we also have the data change type. The data change type is a narrow format where it only defines three specific fields to log to. That would be the date and time of the value, the tag name, which can be an alias name for that particular point, and the value field. So with this type, you can set it up to log, say, a million values all in one table. But it is a little bit more difficult to get the information out because you have to query it by a specific tag name field. Let's use the continuous type and we can specify the logging rate. The logging rate can be sub millisecond with the resolution of opcdatabase.net is 100 nanoseconds. If you're logging at a slower rate, say once an hour or once a day, the logging will occur right at the top of the hour or right at the top of the day as well. So it's evenly divisible at whatever time frame you select. Let's say you selected a time frame of 60 seconds, then every minute right at the top of the minute is when the record will be taken. There are some other properties here. One of the most popular properties is the enable confirmation tag to tell the PLC or the device that the record has been successfully logged or if there was an error we can give it an error feedback as an integer value back to the controller. Those are very popular properties if you're using event driven logging and want to queue up all of the values in the PLC itself. Now we'll define what it is that we're going to log. That's defined under the tags tab. We'll right click in the field list or select the add button to add a field. Select the service that we're going to log from. Now, if you want to log from a remote service, even across the internet, you would want to put in the network node name, the IP address, network node name, or registered domain name of the remote service where the tags are or the data source is that you're going to be logging from. Data buffering is possible when you're doing that. If you lose a network connection, the data source can actually buffer that data and hold on to it. So when the network comes back alive, you'll be able to have that data and not lose anything. Let's just go to the local service in this example and we'll browse some of the opcsystems.net tags. Here I'll select ramp value. I'll click OK. And here is where I can specify the field name. I'm just going to use the field name called ramp. I'll specify the data type. I'll use the default of double float and click OK. So that's one of the points that we're going to log. If you needed to set up a lot of points, you can use a CSV import and export feature right here. I'll select a few more points from the configuration and there we have three points. We can log 
values for at a one second interval. If you wanted to connect directly to OPC servers without using the OPC systems.net tags, you can do that also with the direct OPC interface at the top. Here we can browse an OPC server for a particular item and add that to the configuration. We can also specify the update rate that we want to subscribe to and the data type that we're going to log for that item. We'll click OK and I'm going to shorten up this field name and we'll click OK. And now we're going to specify where it is that we're going to log these values. Under the database tab is where we can specify what database provider we're going to use. SQL Server is very popular but you can also use Oracle, MySQL, Microsoft Access and ODBC. When you use the Oracle and ODBC types you will have to specify the database first. With Oracle it will automatically create the tables. With ODBC you have to create the tables yourself. With SQL Server it will do it all for you. It will create the database, table, and all the field names based upon the tags that you've defined. The first thing we're going to need is the server name that we're going to log to. I'm going to grab that from my SQL Server Management Studio. That's available right here when you first bring up SQL Server Management Studio. You can use the free version of Microsoft SQL Server Express if you'd like. That you can download from Microsoft.com. We'll enter a database name. I'll use the database name OPC Database and a table that doesn't exist as well. Now you can use either Windows Authentication or SQL Server Authentication. We'll add to the configuration and now we're logging to that database at the one second interval. We can also log to CSV files as well. With the CSV logging you simply specify the directory where you want to log to the file name that you want it to be and also you can optionally append the date and time onto the end of that file. After you have defined all of your data logging groups that you want to assign you can click the save button on the toolbar and save that to a particular file. You can then specify this file to automatically be loaded under configure options. We'll select the local service and the second option is to automatically load the default data logging configuration. That will load this configuration set of data logging groups automatically when you restart your computer. If you want to programmatically define the data logging configurations, there's an example of that found under the program group opcsystems.net. In the win form example code that we have right here, you'll see a form called form configure data logging and there you'll see a programmatic interface. It's a free component for you to use. It's a 100% managed component so it can run locally and remotely to talk to remote services and you, it allows you to specify data logging configurations automatically. You can even turn configurations on and off if you'd like as well. Let's go to the SQL Server Management Studio and take a look at the data that's currently being logged. Under databases we'll see the new database called OPC data and under tables we should have a new table called data and we'll query that. One of the nice things about opcdatabase.net is it logs values in an open format so you can use third-party report products to query the data easily. So when we execute that query here we see all of the values with the date and time along with each of the values that's being recorded. So now I can use opcreport.net or opctrend.net to do historical replay. Let's do that really quickly. We have the WPF dashboard application and I'm going to launch the trend window of the WPF dashboard application. That you can find under the program group opcsystems.net and WPF dashboard. If you happen to select the same points that I selected as ramp, random, and sign, you'll be able to use this default trend window. Or you can create your own trend window and now use the history feature. I'll use the history icon. I'll specify the start and end date range that I'm interested in. You can also use custom history feature to search for particular ranges of data. We'll look at uh, 958, 10 a.m. Now you can also use UTC time to record your values. That's found under configure options and you can use universal time codes. 
When I select OK, the service actually obtained the data from the database for me and has now replayed that data. I'm going to show you one more nice feature about opcdatabase.net is that it does buffering if you have a problem either on your network connection or data source. That is found under configure options and we'll select the local service and towards the bottom we have the option to store data logging buffer to disk. So with this feature what it will do is it will write files onto the hard disk whenever there's either a database engine problem or a network failure at the data source. So let's demonstrate that. What I'll do is I'll actually stop the database engine here using the SQL Server Management Studio. I'll go into the directory that I am currently buffering that data to. I had a directory called buffer data. Now we have our first buffer file already into that system and we see that for every minute now we'll have a new file that will be logged into this. So even though we, our system is currently unavailable to write the information to the database engine, we are still able to connect to the OPC server locally and we're able to still cache that data and buffer this now to the hard disk. This is a great solution if you have satellite connections or remote data sources that you'll only be able to connect to occasionally. Now that we have another file, let's go ahead and start the database engine back up. When the service is able to reconnect to the database engine, it will process these files in the order that they were archived, and all of the values that are contained within these files will be logged into the database engine, and there is no data loss during the downtime of the database engine. The same is true on a network connection. If the remote network data source is unavailable, at the data source you'll also see similar files being buffered there as well. And now that the files are actually been processed, we see that they disappear automatically, and each file is processed on its own. For us it was all, almost all together, but each file is processed individually so that it doesn't overwhelm your database engine or your network on a database restore. So let's go back in and query that table again. And we see that we have all of the values in the table even during the time that the buffering was occurring. If you have any more questions about opcsystems.net or the product feature opcdatabase.net, visit us on the web at opcsystems.com. You can find our contact information under Contact Us, along with a selection to request a free product demonstration.